there's a yeah. sprinkle of this is good and like why do you, why why do you got all that it's one of those things what he, he kind of needs it is the thing kind of kind of needs it just a little bit um i feel like it's it's be, again it's one of those things where i think people just need to relearn the matchup and see how they can adapt to that over time because there's a very clear meta with Rivals 1 Crag where it's like you want to play around him at mid range so you can like punish him for his rock pulls and parry the down bees. The fact mm -hmm. that it's so much harder to parry down B now makes that strategy a little bit more difficult just to like directly port over. It's definitely still a part of the matchup for every character, but it's not as plug and play as I think it tends to be in Rivals 1. Um, you, you gotta take you know, a little more nuance, a little more caution with it. Yeah, but I think. I think part of the problem, not even a problem, but part of the reason it's so hard, in my opinion, to parry down B is because you're always worried about so many other things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it, it could be down B, it could be forward air, it could be dash attack, it could be side B, it could be rock. Like, I feel like when you're playing against Craig, down B is one of, like, six options that you have to be thinking about. And so it makes getting parry timing on stuff like that kind of hard because you're being threatened by a lot of stuff at the same time. Wow, that was so nice. Dude, he's insane. The reverse hit of the back air to just seal that out right away. Kim only has 4% on him and he's continuing to let these combos rip right out of the gate. I'm not gonna lie, like I definitely came... When you mentioned earlier, we had four cats in our top three. The thought definitely crossed my mind, oh god, we're gonna have an all crag top three. Which, not specifically with Crag, but I have had a top three of all the same character before in like brackets yeah. of extreme, so this happened, but um It takes the wind out of your sails a little bit. Kib is definitely <laughs> looking like he doesn't want that to be the case oh! right now. He's uh Wait, it's actually nasty! <laughs> Full on pedal to the metal with this beat, you know, not going with anything Dude, too Grayson's crazy. Dude, Grayson is lost! But... Grayson is lost! Yeah. I feel like I've definitely heard, like, mixed things about this matchup, where it seems like Crags don't like it very much, but at the same time, I think that Rock is probably a stronger zoning tool than anything he has, which should be a big asset. It's just that you are going to have to lean a little farther into that slower playstyle to, like, match what Fleet can go. It, it seems like almost that Fleet's kind of chunky hits are big enough to keep Crag in the, the air and just mm. enough that he's uncomfortable, right? Like, I feel like at that, like, 60, 70%, not many characters actually keep Crag in the air with an up air. Yeah, um, sure. At least not enough to, like, meaningfully combo him. So I think it's a little bit uncomfortable because of how meaty uh, the sweet spot of Fleet's up air is. It's keeping him in the air and pretends he's not usually there and setting up for combos that extend a little past what he's used to. Yeah, ooh. Okay, well, I think that was a down B right there, going right into the rock. A great snipe from Grayson, but I'm kind of thinking it might be too little too late. I know it's bad practice to count people out, but this is two stocks and 0% to one stock and 145. That is... Yeah, this is, this is a tough comeback to make. I don't want to say that Craig can't do it, because he absolutely can with mm -hmm. a couple of the good reads, especially with no jump there, but... With the way that Kib has been playing, especially at the start of this game, it's hard to imagine comeback happening. That being said, Grayson making a case for it right now. Yeah, that's in the China show. It is still possible. Going to be difficult, but Kib is at oh, 113. Wait, that should be the stock. Does it confirm that? No, a nice wait from Kib off stage mm -hmm. with the back air into the forward air. Again, not quite going to take the stock. Fleet a little heavier. Yeah, Fleet even with, you know not having quite the traditional float, still quite a few ways to stall and lead out on her recovery. It's kind of a general trait that a lot of air characters share uh, in both these games. Oh, nice. The back air on the mist deck is going to do it. I would like to see Grayson start reacting to those down throws. Uh, multiple people now have DI'd the down throw in at like 140% to avoid the up smash. Uh, but I believe you could probably just go for the up air in that situation, whereas Grayson has been opting for the back air instead. Uh, which hasn't been leading to a kill. So I just think reacting instead of just assuming what's going to happen is probably going to lead to a little bit of better outcome in that situation. I don't know if it would have been the difference maker, but it would have got it down to last stock at the very least. Right. I can have a question in there. We still have some room to uh, get some more applications out for these throws. I do think throws can sometimes feel like they're just kind of thrown in there. Mm -hmm. Um... But again, I feel Rivals generally does a really good job giving each move its own niche, so... Definitely. Ooh. Okay. 
Not gonna find the fair. It's definitely looking like a bit of a reversal of the last game right out the gate. Kib off stage and getting spiked by that rock. I actually... Can we get back from this? What? I'm very surprised. Really clever stuff from Kib to make it back there and actually live the port at 127%. I mean, he's gonna have to recover high due to the pillar, but Grayson unable to punish in any really meaningful way and now pushes Kib back to the ledge. Gonna try and get something going with the rock. I like the mix up there where you throw it kind of up and then throw it down as a bit of a fake out. Not gonna work this time. Kib trying to find his way back to the stage, but Grayson doing a really good job of making sure he's not comfortable. The up air coming out. Grayson had just. 50% roughly between these stocks. Uh, Kib has definitely got some hits in to try and even this out a little bit. But that is kind of the thing against Krag is like when he takes that first stock, there's a very real chance that things just start to snowball immediately after that. Oh, Rock's out though. This is a really big opportunity. Was able to throw the Rock down, but the down air off the platform is going to lead into a back air. It's a back hit back air as well. There is going to send him deep off stage. Krag privilege allows him to get back to the stage and live in a situation where every other character probably would have died. And now, welcome to the danger zone. 42% already applied. Thankfully, Kib able to get a reversal out of that situation, but Grayson setting himself up for success early in this game. Wait, wait, sure. that would have been insane! Oh, Does he reset it? And that there was not, that was not okay. That's the thing, it is incredibly scary to cast low pillar, but every once in a while, if you put the pieces together properly, you can absolutely ruin a Krag's day, and it's a really big part of being able to kind of optimize the Krag matchup for every character, just what can they specifically do to those low pillars. Yeah, and I feel like that was... I mean, that was crazy. <laughs> that was definitely huge in terms of... I feel like we haven't seen anyone contest Craig's pillar quite like that. I feel like that's a confidence play for one, but also just going that there is a way to uh, contest it in a way that is semi-reliable. That's not the first time we've seen Kib go for that sort of thing. And I feel like that's a, a pretty good boon when you see that the rest of the bracket is all Craig. Mm -hmm. Oh, no punish off the pillar, put into special fall. Unfortunately, just not ready for it. And not getting the wave land on the platform means that Grayson's gonna have an easier time getting back to the stage, but using the pillar is able to land back on it, recover high, reset the pillar, and now get a kill confirm off the back of it. Mm -hmm. 130% is a too little too late. Yeah, this is um definitely not ideal for Grayson. This is kind of similar to last game in a way, where you know, th there's definitely potential for a comeback. Um, more so than last time, with just being one stock, but these up airs, you know, showing there's definitely potential here. Kib does have to be a little bit concerned that something can go awry at a moment's notice, but good tech in. And I'm curious why we haven't seen that, uh, the down throw into the up air. Maybe it doesn't work because Craig is a fastballer. We've been seeing it against other people, but the back air... Uh, off the platform is going to be enough to take it and Kib showing us something we haven't seen before. I feel like this is the furthest that someone has pushed the fleet in at least the games I've watched and it's it's honestly a, yeah. a pleasure to view. I mean really like I don't think we had any of the other people that have been really putting in work with fleet in this bracket. I think it was just Kib was kind of like last minute and was like yeah sure I'll do this. Seems cool. Um, and obviously making a case for the fact that his character still has a lot of strengths, a lot of potential sauce. Um, despite being from an archetype that's generally seen as being kind of lame. I think it's, uh, part of it is just like, it feels like the skill ceiling is really high. I would honestly agree, yeah. Um, there's definitely like a really simple flow charty way to get a lot of mileage with Fleet early on. But mm -hmm. there's so many ways, you know, just inherently being a float character makes for some insane uh, optimization that can be done if you're looking to put in the work. And Kib being a longtime float character player is going to be very attuned to, you know, putting in that work and finding those innovations. Yeah, and he looks comfortable with e even the new float mechanics as they're a little bit different than what he might be used to. It looks like he's put in the time uh, and is comfortable with the cancellation timings with what he has to do to get the, uh, the situations that he wants. No tech there from Grayson into a couple of tech situations. Doesn't get too much off of it, but is able to find that back air. Forces Grayson to jump off the ledge, but is unable to punish. Oh, here we go. Oh, is this going to be enough? Quarter? 
Okay, mm -hmm. triple forward air off the side. I was not sure if that was gonna kill or not, but play fair play. Yeah. I definitely was kind of thinking like it might have been better for him to go for a near there, because I've definitely seen my fair share of like near kills with this character. But yes. fair having an extra range still does make it feel very good to combo with in very specific situations. Fair enough. I feel like wow. That up air is so, so good against Craig. It feels like that has been really one of the big difference makers in terms of tools that are allowing Kip to play into this game. And luckily for Kip, not dying in that situation, that forward smash hits like an absolute truck uh, yeah, the, if you die incorrectly. Exactly. Ashton, and then the rock after it too, imagining it hit by the rock right after it starts falling. So it's like a hit in the top oh, last time. forces it out early! Kip is not... I don't care what anyone says, Kip's my favorite player. <laughs> I am, he's definitely, <laughs> definitely reminded me of why I love this guy so much. The fact he's just so bold going off and passing these colors in a way that I don't think we've really seen anyone else today do quite as confidently and comfortably. No, no one has challenged Craig off stage like that. And I, it's because, uh, and I was talking about it earlier, every time someone tried to go challenge Bio off stage, they died. Like they got reversaled in a way that was <laughs> immediately detrimental to their life. Like there's a huge risk to challenging Craig off stage. The yeah. confidence it takes to get it right this many times is so good from Kib. That being said, Grayson putting it back together on this last stock, ensuring that the stock was answered back in kind and is now putting a ton of pressure on Kib at the ledge. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> did the rock on the platform just stop the get the special? That's insane. Yeah, it did. Oh, man. Oh, and this is a bad spot. Ooh. Able to get the double jump, but still Ooh. off stage. Lands back on the pillar and is able to get back onto the stage, but Kib is ready for it. Now back into more of a neutral situation as Grayson comes down with a down air, not catching the neutral get up, but still yeah. applying so much pressure. The fair out of shield is going to put Kib in a tough spot off stage, potentially a game position if Grayson's able to find the right stop at the ledge, but he's not in the rolls in. It's about time Kib started calling that out. Grayson has really consistently been using roll in after that down throw as a way to get out of pressure. Yeah, you know, see that up tilt right there. We are at a point where these random up tilts just to like try to keep uh, Kib at bay, they could result in a kill. Yeah, there is a lot of things that'll kill right now, especially, honestly, from both players, any back air on the side of Fleet is going to do the trick. The up air after the down air is going to do the trick, and Grayson is going to manage to take that game three to push it to a game four, and it has been close across the board. 100% with you on that one, too, but... Very much Eliminus now has two counter picks to work with, which should be pretty interesting to see how that all pans out, since these are both characters where I think they would, my gut is telling me they would generally prefer to have bigger stages with more space to set up their zoning. Yeah. Um, Fleet probably needs it a little more than Crag, who gen historically speaking is just kind of good on every stage. Um, with Fleet, you know, I imagine there's still some t uh, some stages like Tempest, for example, where you probably wouldn't want to play Fleet there very often, or like maybe Ho Dojo. Uh, gonna be running it back to Jules Vale, going home. Hey, fair enough. I, I feel like I was expecting maybe a stage with a lot of platforms where some potentially tricky movement uh, it's true. in terms of setting that sort of thing up, but I feel like the stage is big, you know, the platform moves a little bit, so there's some opportunities for an outplay there. It may just also be a comfort pick if you're not too confident in all the, the kind of weird stuff you can do. Why did that break the arrow? <laughs> it's very easy to break. Kag is just too strong. Side beat, put pressure on the ledge, forces the jump. We've seen a lot of jumps from the ledge from Grayson. That and the roll-ins after down throw is something I would like to see uh, Kib catch up on. Ooh, that is very scary right there and caught on ledge by the f -strong. Still living for now, but very much in the danger zone. That also is so good. It's so reliable for catching rolls, catching... That kills! That's why you press B. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what Craig, I found with gotta... the pummels, is like, you might as well buffer one of them, even if you're wrong. Like, even if, they, if yeah. they're not going for it, it is probably, it is good practice, generally, to just remember to buffer one of them. I mean, the se my secret is against Craig, I will buffer B every time. Yeah, I think that is a very fair thing to do up to a certain point. Wait, it's 
offstage interaction is crazy. Kip is so good at putting Grayson in an uncomfortable position offstage and then capitalizing on the high recovery. I think people often forget that there's a second part uh, of that. See, let's roll in. Kim, <laughs> get me on the line right now. He's, You're going to win the game. <laughs> he's trying so hard to make it work. It's not quite working out. But I think what you're saying about these offstage interactions has kind of made me realize, like, we're seeing Kib use wall jump in an offensive way that we haven't really seen anyone else in this bracket do. Because, yes, you know, you normally right. think of it in this, especially in this game, as a recovery tool primarily, so more of a defensive option. But there's still offensive applications you can use without wall jump to kind of serve as like a situational third jump. And Kib is very aware of that fact, but. Ooh, that sucks if you're Kib. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what happens when the offstage Craig gameplay doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You set your up for that, yourself up for that sort of situation. Forced to burn the pillar early because he had the rock in hand. Grayson thankfully able to make it back and now put on some extra damage despite being at 170% himself. Wall jump there, gonna cancel the side B. Yeah. Ooh, Missed attack. attack on the platform. Yeah, gonna mean the stock is confirmed, but Kib, who is leading pretty much the entire game now on the back foot. And it seems like a lot of people are not um, not ready for how fast they have to DI. And I don't know if that's a rivals thing. God, this is annoying. Ooh, so many down here. Oh, the platform! Can he, can he get back? How many times did he get hit with that? The platform stopped that arrow right there. Oh, that's depressing if you're oh, Kib. Yeah, that's a bummer. But I that thought he, said... was, he was chaining that all the way down. Oh, the jump taken. Not going to be able to find the pillar. But fourth off stage. Once again, and Kib so aware of how strong that float down air is. It is so good. Actually, just straight up dying to that. Wow. Um, At 80. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, like, in Rivals 1, at least, Drift DI does kind of serve as, like, if you do mess up your DI, like, you still need a DI on time, but if you do mess up, there's, like, a security blanket. Obviously, this game doesn't have that. I, th I think the real kicker is that... In a lot of plat fighters, you don't have walls going all the way down on every single stage. Um, so people don't think about DIing into the wall as much as Rivals players do, where it's like genuinely one of the most important things to actually making your stocks last for like a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there definitely are some moves in this game that send at a really nice angle away from the wall, but there's definitely a, a good chunk that don't, and so if you're able to, to DI into the wall yeah. uh, and get that tech, you're, you're going to get some mileage out of it for sure. Mm -hmm. But it definitely feels like vertical, like DI against vertical moves feels weaker in this game. Um, not sure yeah, if that's a placebo is. or not, but it definitely feels that way. I like if, did Drift DI give you more DI or just gave you more um, control so over it the was DI? When you were, so after, like you have normal DI, right? And then once you're in hit stun and you're flying through the air, you can influence how far you're moving horizontally. Uh, yeah. So, doesn't affect you vertically at all, but still, like, even if you're just getting sent straight up, you can still go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right just to kind of, like, have a small mix-up so if the opponent's not perfectly centered on you, they might drift too far in one direction. Uh, so you can kind of use it to, like, juke people out a little bit. And obviously help yeah. you get to the wall in a pinch. Like, it's not the key way you're going to be doing that. Usually it is still your main PI that you use to get to the wall intact. 